Howdy folks, thanks for checking in to Mr. Ulrich's Land of Biology .com. I am Mr. Ulrich. In this video, we're actually going to start with a couple questions. Three of them, to be precise, and you can write down the answers. So when did humans first become aware of cells? And in order for us to do that, what did we have to invent? And when did that invention take place? Was there a difference between when the technology was developed and when we used it to learn about cells? Hmm. The answer to number two, of course, microscopes. This video, we're going to be looking more at the compound light microscope that we're going to be using in labs. But of course, we'll review a little bit of the basics. So a little introduction here to light microscopy in general. Historically, lenses were used to look at things uh, in the distance. Uh, Anton van Leeuwenhoek, a 17th century Dutch character with fabulous hair, probably a wig, uh, he's credited as being one of the first people to kind of use telescopes backwards and look at things that are nearby and small. Uh, the microscope there in the lower left, that's, uh, that doesn't really look like a microscope. It looks more like a sled or something. Uh, that's actually one of Leeuwenhoek's microscopes. Uh, his microscopes uh, come in one of two categories of light microscopes. Um, they're either simple, like Leeuwenhoek's, or compound, like the one that just flapped away there. That was one of Robert Hooke's compound microscopes. We'll talk more about those in a minute. Uh, either way, both uh, types of microscope, the simple and compound, both work by refracting light as it goes from one medium to another. I'm sure you've all seen the classic example of the pencil in the glass of water. It looks like the pencil is broken or bent. Uh, it's, we, we use the, that optical characteristic uh, to our benefit in microscopes. Simple light microscopes are simply a single lens. They typically have rather low magnification. Uh, even so, like a magnifying glass still has quite a bit of use. Uh, Leeuwenhoek's microscopes were all simple microscopes, and uh, they were so handy that we were able to develop cell theory based on uh, their design. Uh, so they're still very handy, even in the uh, basic magnifying glass format. Where the simple microscope is a single lens, the compound microscope is actually two lenses stacked on top of one another. You've got one down here that's next to the object that you're looking at called the objective lens. And this one up here next to your eyeball called the eyepiece or ocular. Don't get confused by those other two objective lenses down there. They're not in position, so they're not, uh, they're not being used. They're just kind of hanging out. Uh, since we're able to magnify a magnified image, uh, we get really good magnification of these and uh, much higher resolution. We'll talk more about that later, of course. Uh, it was the development of microscopes and especially the compound microscope that really propelled our understanding of uh, biology and life. Of course, we need to get to know our compound light microscope, uh, get to know all of its parts and how they work. You can download a copy of this diagram uh, directly from Mr. Ulrich's Land of Biology .com, or you can go to Wikimedia Commons, where I got this from. Um, uh, since this is a light microscope, it's probably a good idea that we start with the light source. In this diagram, the light source is a mirror. Microscopes that we use all have their own light source as just a you know a light bulb. First thing that the light is going to go through is the diaphragm also called an iris diaphragm for how it works. Just like your diaphragm is a muscle that controls the amount of air that's going in and out of your lungs, the diaphragm controls the amount of light that goes through the specimen. Speaking of the specimen, we're going to stick that on the stage. The stage has a hole in the middle of it. And that hole is going to let the light shine through and shine through the specimen. Yes, the specimen has to be transparent and very thin. The first lens that the image is going to go through, in this case, is the low power objective. The only reason why it's a low power objective is because 10x is lower than 40x, and those are the two choices that we have here. Uh, the 10x objective is not always the low power objective. Now, we could be using the high power objective, of course. That is the 40x lens in this case. In order to switch between the low and high power, we have a revolving nose piece. 
Now this here is called the body tube. It's uh, just exactly what that sounds like. It's a length of tube that keeps the two lenses uh, at a fixed distance from one another. The last lens that the image is going to go through is called the ocular lens. It's just a froofy way of saying eyepiece. All these parts make up uh, what's called the light system of a light microscope. There's also the support system for the light microscope. Over here uh, we have the base. That's uh, what you're going to hold the microscope with when you carry it. This is an old school type of microscope here, uh, and it has what's called a pivot point. Our microscopes do not. The pivot point allowed you to sit down and move the microscope so that you could look through it um, from a seated position. Of course, the problem with that is then the stage moves, and if you're looking at something uh, liquidy, it will pour into your lap. Uh, on this microscope, they have what are called stage clips that hold the slide to the stage. We use what are called mechanical stages. Uh, they have a clip and uh, two adjusting knobs that allow you to really precisely move the slide back and forth rather than uh, relying on your big old fat thumbs. Um, the arm is where you're going to put your other hand when you carry a microscope. One hand on the arm, one hand on the base. These next two knobs are the fine adjustment or fine focus. This moves the uh, stage very, very, very slowly uh, in slow increments uh, towards the objective or away from the objective. Uh, the larger knob is the coarse adjustment and that's going to make uh, very large changes in uh, focus by moving the objective. Some of them actually move the stage, but the, the, the result is the same. You uh, change the distance between the specimen and the lens. Take a couple moments here to review how to focus uh, your microscope. First thing you want to do is uh, always start with a low power scanning objective. It's going to be the 4x for the scanning objective or the 10x for the low power objective on our microscopes. Depends on what you're looking at. Um, but uh, you always want to start with either the low or the scanning objective. Next thing you want to do, crank on that course adjustment until you get the stage right up next to the objective or, or as close as you can get those two things together. It will stop. There's a break on them. Uh, the uh, low power or scanning objectives are pretty short and so uh, you won't hit this the slide into the objective. Now you're going to move the slide around using the knobs on the mechanical stage. Move the slide around until that portion of the slide that you think is going to have the specimen is in the light. It's going to look like a little spotlight and you want to put the specimen right in the spotlight. Now you look through the ocular lens. Notice we haven't even looked through the eyepiece yet. So now you look through the ocular lens and slowly turn that course adjustment. Eventually something is going to come into focus. It might be the bottom uh, surface of the slide and you'll see some scratches or some dirt or dust or something like that. If you want to see if what you're looking at and what you focused on is part of the slide or just <laughs> on the lens or your eyelashes or something, um, move the move the slide back and forth. If what you're looking at moves with the slide, then obviously it's part of the slide. And then it just becomes a matter of pushing the slide around and trying to find the specimen, find what you're looking at. Uh, mess with the fine adjustment back and forth so you focus on different levels of the slide. And eventually, hopefully, you'll find it. Okay, so you've found the specimen, you found the critter, you found the amoeba, whatever it was that you're looking for. And you want to see it in more detail so you can make better observations. Okay, so it's time to switch to high power. Please follow these next few steps and it'll be much easier for you. So first thing you do, of course, is you get it in focus under low power. Then move the slide around. Remember the image flip, remember how everything is reversed, but remove, move the slide around uh, until that specimen is smack dab in the center of the field of view. Don't be tempted. You're going to be tempted, I know. Don't, don't succumb to the temptation to change the focus. Leave it in focus and switch to high power. I know, it's going to come really close. It's going to look like it's going to hit the slide. As long as your specimen, your slide is prepared well and it's not super thick, 
there's no reason for the objective to hit the slot. It's going to come crazy close, but it shouldn't really hit it. From here on out, you only use the fine adjustment. The coarse adjustment is going to have too much torque, too much power. It's, you're going to be able to drive that uh, objective right through the slide and break the slide and maybe even the objective. So fine adjustment only. It should be pretty close to in focus. We'll end on a couple safety tips. You're always going to carry the microscope with one hand on the arm and one hand on the base. Be aware of where you're plugging in your cord and where people have to walk. And you will always use fine adjustment. Fine adjustment only when you have high power objectives in place. I can't say that enough. And, of course, you're always going to be responsible users of the microscopes. Uh, when you're done, return the slides to where they need to go. Um, be nice with the cord and uh, put it back in the microscope closet. Uh, sometimes I might tell you that you can leave them on the, on the uh, lab stations, but as a matter of habit, please uh, put them back when you are done. Well, that's probably enough for this time around. Uh, you can certainly email me with any questions or comments or concerns or feedback or quotes or whatever. Uh, of course, please check out Mr. Uh, and see any of the resources, the labs, the handouts, uh, other videos, all kinds of useful and useless material. Thanks for checking in, and we'll see you in class.